Hey, what's going on guys? So if you haven't been around recently, uh, I have been taking my game collection, splitting it up into its different various consoles, and I've been taking the three most expensive and the three least expensive games, and I'm saying, are the most expensive ones worth it? Are the least expensive ones worth anything? And uh, last week, we started doing the Super Nintendo, and we did the three most expensive, and I think as a surprise to nobody, they were all RPGs. Uh, but now we're gonna be doing the three least expensive, and are they worth it? And I'm gonna preface this one, uh, growing up, all of my, Super Nintendo was my console, that was the one that I got, that was mine, that's what I grew up with, and uh, most of my games, I will say, came from yard sales or flea markets, so because of that, uh, I definitely have some real stinkers, but I also have really fond memories of these games, which is like kind of ridiculous, because you look at some of these games and like, objectively, they're horrible, I mean like, they're, they're in no way good, but when I... Uh, this is one of the few times where I actually recorded the gameplay before I'm recording this part. Um, and so I know what the three games are, and, uh, I will say that out of the three, uh, the, first off, the cheapest one is, is BS. The cheapest one is a banger, and we're gonna get to that. But, this is, a, this was a tough video for me. Regardless, this was a very tough video for me, um, to say, are they worth anything? Cause, like, to me they are! <laughs> but, Maybe they're not, so let's take a look at these games, let's see uh, the three cheapest Super Nintendo games in my game collection, and are they worth anything? So coming in at number three, with a price tag of $9, is a video game based on a movie called Warlock. The movie came out in 1989, same year as me, but uh, the game itself um, came out a little bit later and was made by LJN. Now if you know anything about, uh, well, the games of this era, LJN kind of did all of the movie tie-in games, and LJN is also pretty synonymous for bad games. So me as a kid, however, I kind of liked this game. Well, rather, I didn't really have much of a choice. It's one of the few games I had, but I thought it was good. And by good, I mean extremely hard. I also did not know anything about this game or what the plot was or what was going on, uh, basically because it was based on a horror movie, which I was too young to watch. And uh, I got this game secondhand from probably a flea market or a yard sale. So I did not have a manual. I didn't have any kind of, uh, you know, a box with the uh, plot on the back. I did not know what was going on. The only thing I knew about this game is you played a long-haired guy in a trench coat with an orb. That uh, you can use that orb to kill butterflies and birds, and you can also blast dogs. Uh, up until you walk up to this bridge where the mean old man blows up the bridge, and I guess you uh, start the game proper. I also do want to quickly bring up that when you get a game over in this game, you're greeted by like the most terrifying face ever, and this probably has like to do with like uh, some of my nightmares as a kid, because like Jesus Christ, this needs to uh, never be on a video game. Now that I'm an adult, I can only assume that like a lot of this stuff kind of loosely happened in the movie, like just enough to kind of get the uh, the plot for the game going. But one thing I always thought was weird was like immediately the second level, you're in this huge, huge library and they show like a librarian turning into a zombie and then they keep showing librarians turning into zombies. And as a kid, I was always like, how many friggin like librarians does this place have? Like, you know, what is the support staff for this uh, like massive well, like five-story library and then of course at the end you have uh, the wizard guy who's extremely unfair like his pattern doesn't even make sense like his lightning goes all the way across the screen and he goes back and forth you don't have time to even hit him uh, I don't know like I said as a kid this game was in like incredibly hard and like as an adult trying to record this gameplay footage it like literally has not gotten any easier I can say what I'm about to show you is like literally as far as I got as a kid and then like also as far as I got here as an adult. Granted, like now that I'm an adult, I could look up passwords and kind of see what kind of stuff's going on. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe I don't care enough to do that. Um, <laughs> I will say this like third level or second level. I don't know. The intro kind of I don't know if that counts to level or not. But uh, I will say that this part, the music goes like extremely, extremely hard. Like it has no business being this awesome. Here, check this out. And this is uh, typically when I stopped playing the game. You like climb into this cave where there's dragons that shoot fireballs and like mud monsters that just keep popping out. 
and you get hurt by drops of water from the ceiling and there's giant spiders and even if you get to the bottom and find the crystal like I don't know how to leave this place at all I don't know <laughs> You know, I started off, like, when I saw this list, I was like, man, these are all the games I had when I was a kid. You know, they, like, they can't be that bad. But, like, now that I'm replaying this, I have, like, instantly remembered that this game is not good. <laughs> like, not good at all. So, I guess, uh, number one, Warlock, is it worth it? I'm gonna say no. Like, I would not spend $9 on this game. Uh, I really don't recommend playing it. It's just extremely hard. Uh, just way, way too hard. Now, this next one's kind of weird, right? Like, is it a game? <sighs> I don't know. Regardless, number two, clocking in at $5, is Mario Paint. Now, this is kind of weird for a couple reasons for the list. Like, one, I don't quite know if you could classify this as a game. I mean, there is a game aspect to it. And two, according to price charting, it is $5 loose. However, you do have to have the mouse to even play it. And I'm pretty sure this $5 price tag does not include the mouse, so I don't know, whatever, this is my video and I'm too lazy and I've already recorded the gameplay before I started th actually thinking about it. But uh, regardless, I mean, the title screen is really cool. A lot of people don't know this, but in the title screen you can actually click all the letters and they do different stuff, which is what you're watching right now. Um, but Mario Paint is not as much a game as like a learning tool, and I'll tell you what, it's actually really cool and like... As a kid, I really, really wanted this game. Like, this is one that I did not get secondhand. This is one that I distinctly remember getting for Christmas. And like, this is a game that I really was hyped up about. And to me, all the hype was there. Of course, like the main draw of Mario Paint is it's basically like paint for your like, you know, Windows 95 computer. You can paint stuff. You can use different size brushes and spray paints and stamps. Uh, you can also do the easy option of like having like a pre-done coloring book type thing and then using like the paint bucket to auto fill the colors and do whatever you want. But um, neither of these reasons were the reason I wanted this game at all. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, I wanted this game like 100% for the music maker. So for those of you who don't know, like I'm really, like I've played music my whole life. I'm really big into music. I play nine instruments. Um, I do a lot of stuff musically, and this game, like, really, really helped bud that, uh, curiosity in young, young wolf. Um, the cool thing is, with the music creator, uh, it's kind of, like, very deep, even though it's, it's very simplistic. But you can go through, and with the set sound effects, you can put them on the, uh, staff, and get your different, you know, obviously, octaves of notes. Um, you can change the speed, um, you know, there isn't any quality of life here, though. Like, there is no copy and paste or whatever you literally have to do like everything over and over and over again but it's cool and they also have like three built-in songs which is also neat because you can take those and add to them or adjust them like as like a good starting point but once again like this is something I always really really enjoyed with Mario Paint and it's like the main reason I wanted it I remember playing it at a friend's house and I was instantly like okay I want this for Christmas and I asked for it and then that's why I even own it but besides the music, besides the painting, and they even have like an animation feature, which if I don't paint, then I'm definitely not animating, so I've never even messed with that. There is an actual game to this, and I'll tell you what, uh, in recording this gameplay, I actually um, <laughs> came across something funny. So there's a little game, it's, it's like noted by the coffee break sig uh, sign, but you are a little hand with a fly swatter, and you swat bugs, and then at the end there's a big crazy robot bug. Um, as a kid, I never was able to beat the robot bug, right? So I went through, and I beat all the stuff, and I would always get to the very end, and then die. And as I'm recording this, I'm like, oh my god, I think I'm gonna beat it. And then I did, like, I actually beat it. For the first time in my life, I beat the robot bug, and I was like, oh my god, I, I beat it. Like, that's amazing. And then there's a second level. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I thought there would only be one level, but there's like a second level and to be honest Like I was kind of riding the high of uh, beating us for the first time in my entire life So um, I just kind of ended it there. <laughs> I was like hey, this was cool, um, but I'm done Regardless like I said this one kind of broke the rules in many ways on this list because I didn't take into account the mouse Etc, etc, but if you have the mouse and you have five dollars I will say that Mario paint if nothing else for the music creator is absolutely worth it Okay, so real talk. I am not a big sports person. I am like five foot four uh, When I was in school, I like skateboarded and stuff like that um, the one sport I did play, I guess, in high school is I played tennis, which is definitely like a one-player kind of situation. Uh, two if you're doing doubles. 
But, uh, you know, I'm not a sports guy, and because of that, I don't like sports games. In fact, there are three sports games in my entire life that I liked, and uh, one would be Windjammers, that game is amazing. One is Neo Turf Masters, like, that game has the best music, and it's just really, really good. And I am upset because the number one cheapest game in my collection at $3 is College Slam, and this is my all-time favorite sports game just straight up ever. $3 is just absolutely insulting. This game is the best, like the best. And I'm not gonna say like the base game is great because I don't think I've ever actually played the base game ever. I don't even know what drove me to do this. Like I got this game definitely secondhand. Like this is something I got from a flea market. Uh, maybe my parents brought it home. Like this is not a game I would have ever chose. Not a game that I picked out. I don't even know how it got in my collection, but I've had it like since the dawn of my video game life. And I will tell you right now, I don't know what drove me to do this, but the first thing I did when I got this game is I went through the options. I don't know why, I've never done that before. Went to the options, I saw this weird thing for power-ups and juice mode and all this hot spots. I didn't know what any of it was, but I just cranked them all up. I just maxed it all out, I don't know, whatever. And oh my God, this game is the best. It's just, oh, it's so damn good. So with all those power-ups on, you get like these little pads on the ground. If you're standing on the pad that has a number on it, uh, if you make a shot or a slam dunk from that pad, that's how many points you get. So if you're standing on an eight and you like, you know, jump up and do a little little shot there, boom, eight points automatically, game-changing kind of scenario. Uh, you hold the shoulder buttons to basically run like at the speed of light, but no. All of this is nothing. All of this is totally secondary to the power-ups. You see these blue, like, Advil-looking pills with letters on them? They all do stuff. And, you know, the ones that really stood out to me always were the W, which turns you into a tornado, which makes you unstoppable. Uh, the I, which for some reason turns your partner invisible, not you. I never really got that, but whatever. The B, which acts like a giant just earthquake. Boom, everyone hits the ground. The Z, when you hit the Z, a lightning bolt blows up your goal. So, like, for a small amount of time, the, uh, the other team cannot score a point at all. That being said, like, the AI and everything is still in there, and the programming's still in there, so you can technically get fouled for goaltending, which, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know anything about basketball, so... In my mind, like, when I heard goaltending the first time, I was like, I'm trying to stop them from getting points, what's the deal? But, apparently that's, like, actually a, a big deal, uh, whatever, sorry. Um, but no, all this is, all that is great. All of that is nothing. The ultimate power-up, the best power-up in the game is the letter D, and that is for Mega Dunk. Mega Dunk lets you fly across the court. Does not matter what distance. You can literally pass the ball to yourself. You know, they just scored a point, so you're on your side, and just jump across the whole entire court and slam dunk every single time. You can go, you can stand on like one of those eight point deals I was talking about and just go flying, just off screen, thousand camera shots, boom, super slam. It is the best. It is the absolute best. Like this is the way sports games should be. Like just stupid, like stupid ignorant fun. Like this to me is one of the best games. I mean, it's like literally one of the best games on my Super Nintendo. So when I saw it was at the very bottom, like obviously I was like disheartened. I was like, no, no. But then I started thinking about it. And if you have been watching, like I said, I just started the series, but so, so far I've only done, you know, the Super Nintendo and like the original one I did was the GameCube. And one of the rules I kind of made on the cheap ones on the GameCube is I wouldn't include sports titles that were like numbered, you know, like Madden 11, Madden 12. And like the thing is like, I don't actually have any of those. So it's kind of a stupid rule. I just wanted to be clear for like you guys, but in my mind, this game is, like, not like that. Like, College Slam is not a, you know, it's not a Madden or an NBA 2K blah. This is, like, its own, like, thing, and it's all about the power-ups, I'm telling you. And, I don't know. This game is the jams. As far as, is it worth it? Absolutely. Is it worth $3? Absolutely. This game is worth every bit of $3. I would honestly pay, like, a substantial amount of money for this game. It is so stupid good. I highly, 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 highly recommend it. So, say what you will about Warlock, I mean, okay, that game is bad, but come on, I played it a lot. Uh, Mario Paint, it's, is it a, even a game? I mean, I don't know. It's, it's good though, it's definitely good, definitely creative, but I'm sorry, College Slam is the jams. That game is amazing, 
it is in no way indicative of the price, uh, the quality of game that is. Like I said, I like three sports games pretty much only, and that is one of them. If not, maybe the best one of them. Um, yeah, that's wrong. Three bucks. Uh, if any of you guys are collecting for Super Nintendo and need a fun, cheap game, buy College Slam. Buy it right now. Buy five copies of it. Because guess what? They're three bucks. Who cares? I mean, you're spending $15. You get five copies of the greatest game ever made in the sports dominion of games. Ah. Hey, that's just me, though. What do you guys think about these games? Um, do you own any of these games? Do you agree with how I feel about any of these games? Um, or do you think maybe they're worth a little bit more or at least worth your time? Let me know in the comments down below. That's gonna do it for us today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't, please do. It'd be amazing. I'd love to hear from you guys, so throw a comment down below. Even if it's not about this video, just say, hey, why not? Um, you know, give a thumbs up, thumbs down if you feel any kind of way, and as always, take it easy.